Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a rotational static equilibrium problem. This is going to be the ladder example. So two things I wanna say. First of all, rotational static equilibrium. This just means things are balanced. Nothing's moving, nothing's slipping, nothing's rotating. Everything is balanced. The second thing I wanna say about this problem, because what we are gonna be looking at today is this scenario. It's a ladder resting against the side of a house. And what I wanna say about this is this is some kind of poetic justice because at the same time that my students are doing this over the year, I had to help my parents clean out the gutters. And in case you're curious, no, I do not live with my parents, but that doesn't mean they can still use me for free labor. So anyways, as we're cleaning out the gutters, one very important thing is that the ladder does not slip because then, you know, someone could get hurt like my dad did 10 years ago. So clearly he didn't pay attention during his physics class. But luckily, you can learn from his mistake so you do not fall victim to this same problem. So let's say the ladder is against the side of the house at a 60 degree angle. I'm gonna say the ladder is about 13 feet long. And so what I'm gonna say next is not true in, in real life, but it's very common for this specific example. We're gonna say there is no friction against the house side of the ladder, meaning the only friction is right here between the ground and the ladder. And I'm gonna say this is mu s, static friction, we don't wanna move. And you, my friends, are going to be solving for the static friction force. Let's say the mass of the ladder is eight kilograms. My question is, what does the coefficient of friction have to be for this ladder to not slide? So the first thing we gotta do for any of these kind of problems, rotational static equilibrium, is we gotta draw a free body diagram. In this case, I would say there are three forces. First, we have the force of gravity from the ladder. This needs to go exactly in the middle and it points straight down. Mg points straight down, it is located exactly in the middle, meaning 6.5 meters away from the base of the ladder. And that's true on either side, 6.5 this way or 6.5 that way. Then I have two more forces to worry about. One is the normal force from the bottom of the ladder. I'm gonna call this NB, normal force bottom. And then there's another normal force which points straight to the left, and that's normal force, I, I guess, from the side of the house, so NS. I don't care what you call these variables, it doesn't matter. And actually, there's one more force I missed. Of course, it's static friction, obviously. But which way will static friction point, left or right? Well, if you think about it, which way does this ladder want to go? If there was no friction at all, the ladder would be sliding this way. So to combat that, friction is going to point to the right. So that is Fs, my static force of friction. And there are my four forces. This looks like a puzzle with all the different ways these are going. But this is fine for right now. The next thing I wanna do for this problem is I wanna say the torques going clockwise are equal to the torques going counterclockwise. This is the equilibrium part of rotational static equilibrium. But before I use this equation, I gotta pick a pivot point. This one's not obvious because there's two pivot points you can choose logically. You can either choose the bottom here or you can choose the side of the house here. I am going to choose the side of the house as my pivot point. And the reason why is because if I choose the bottom, well then, the torque from static friction is gonna to go to zero, it's gonna be eliminated, and I know that because torque is F times D, D is distance. You put the pivot point right here, I promise you, the distance will be zero, Fs is eliminated, and that's not good because then you can't solve for the friction, so that wouldn't make sense. So instead, I choose the pivot point as the side of my house, NS side, meaning this force goes to zero when I make my torque equation because that distance is gonna be zero. And that's very nice for me because I didn't know what that force was gonna be anyway. But now I gotta consider these three forces, NB, FS, and MG, and I gotta figure out if it's going clockwise or counterclockwise based on the pivot point in green. If you think about it hard enough, the correct answer is MG is counterclockwise, FS is counterclockwise, and NB ends up being clockwise. And the way I like to think of it, I like to think of my pencil as the ladder, and then I push my ladder in the different directions as my forces, and I'm either gonna get a clockwise motion 
or a counterclockwise motion, and that's how I determine if it's clockwise or counterclockwise. I mean, honestly, I just kind of do that in my head now because I'm kind of an expert. Not to brag, I'm just better than you, and I think we can all agree with that. But anyways, back to the problem. The clockwise torque is going to be NB, which is the force, times the distance. This distance is the full 13 feet. Out. Why am I using feet? I'm changing this back to meters. So I'm going to say 13 meters. And now the distance is 13, much better. And then the sine theta part. This is kind of annoying. So I'm going to write this off to the side because there's so much clutter here. Here's my ladder. Here's my normal force NB. And this angle is already 60 degrees, which means that this angle, which is the one I need, is 30 degrees. So it's going to be the sine of 30. I want the sine of 30. There's the sine of 30 right there. That's it for my clockwise torques. Now for the counterclockwise ones. I've got FS and I've got MG. So first I'll do FS. The force is FS, obviously. Times the distance. This distance is also the full 13 meters away. So then times 13. And then this time the angle is going to be the 60 degrees, which is nice. So that's sine of 60. And then plus the torque from mg. Mass is 8 kilograms, we said. G is 9.8. Distance is tricky. It's the only one that's not 13. It's this distance from the pivot point to my actual force. And we know that distance is 6.5 meters. So that distance is 6.5. And then I'm running out of room here, but it's going to be times the sine of, again, I'm going to draw it off to the side because this is getting messy. But here's my ladder. I've got mg going down. I need this angle right here which if I know this angle 60, this is the complement to it. In other words, from geometry, it's, it's 30 degrees. Just take my word for it, it's 30 degrees. And now I have everything I need to solve for FS, the static friction force, except I don't know NB, the normal force from the bottom. The good news is I actually do know that normal force, how? Well, because if I look back at the picture, there's only one force going up and one force going down. NB goes up and MG goes down. Those two forces have to equal each other, and I know that because for rotational static equilibrium, I know the forces going up must equal the forces going down. I know this is less famous than the Torx clockwise equals Torx counterclockwise equations, which is directly related to Torx, but while the torque is true, the forces relationship is also going to be true. So what I'm saying is NB must equal MG which means NB equals eight times 9.8, so good. And so then plugging into that equation, it's gonna be eight times 9.8 times 13 times the sine of 30 equals FS times 13 times sine of 60 plus eight times 9.8 times 6.5 times the sine of 30. And if I plug in a lot of this in my calculator, I'll get 509.6 equals 11.26 FS plus 254.8. And then from here, it's just algebra. Subtract the 254.8 from both sides and then divide by 11.26. And that's gonna get me FS equals 22.6 Newtons. Keep in mind though, that was not the question. The question was not asking about the static friction force, it was asking about the coefficient of static friction, which means finally I used the definition of static friction, which is Fs equals mu s times the normal force. Technically it's less than or equal to, but if I'm talking about the max static friction, it is equal to, and I am talking about the max static friction, so that's why this works. Anyways, 22.6 equals mu s times the normal force, we have two normal forces here. It's either NB or NS. And the correct answer is NB. Why? Because NB, normal force B, is the surface that's the same as the static friction surface. So it has to do with the surface, not the pivot point. So I do need NB. I already have NB. We said it was 8 times 9.8. So 8 times 9.8. Divide both sides by the 8 and the 9.8. And now we'll get a final answer of 0.29. That has to be the minimum 
static friction coefficient, meaning if it's any stronger, like 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.9, you will be fine, and if you're less than 0.29, then you will not be okay. So that's gonna do it for this problem. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.